Hi, it's Toronto's real estate team at Remax, and here is our January 2019 Toronto Real Estate Market Report. In January, condo sales led the markets in both the 416 and 905 areas. I'll comment more on that in this broadcast as we go through the market report. So let's review some of the Toronto Real Estate Board statistics and see what's happened. Sales were flat for January compared to last year, with 4,009 houses and condominiums changing hands in all the districts. This was the third lowest number of sales for the month since 2009, and almost 10% below the average over the past nine years. Condo townhouse and high-rise suites took a significant 38.4% share of the market, with 1,541 units being sold. The January average sale price for all GTA homes came in at $748,328. This was a very modest 1.7% increase from one year ago. The active listing inventory is one of the strongest indicators of how slow or fast the market has been moving. The inventory average for the month of January compared to historical numbers decreased by 9.9% but were flat compared to last year at this time. This is actually a good sign since we're not being overwhelmed with high inventory levels and probably keeping us from seeing a slump in prices in some GTA locations. The sales to listings or percent chance of selling ratio is how we determine what type of market we're actually in. 24 to 28% is a neutral market, below 24% is a buyer's market, and above 28% is a seller's market. In January, that ratio finished at 33.5%, identical to last year. The GTA overall is barely into seller market territory, so sellers may need to adjust their pricing expectations if they want to make a move. The days on market average for GTA slash Toronto homes was 33 days, two days slower than in December. So let's look at what's happening in the downtown Toronto condominium market. West of Young and south of Bloor in the CO1 Treb district, the average sale price for January was $664,279. That average moved up 7.6% from the same time last year. With 183 condo sales in the month, the numbers were down 28% compared to 2018 and back to 2014 levels. There were 381 active listings on the market in January, 3% fewer than last year and significantly lower than prior to 2017. The ratio of sales to listings was 48%, which keeps CO1 in a moderate seller's market territory. The average days on market came in at 25, four days slower than last month. Now east of Young and south of Bloor in the CO8 Treb district, the average sale price for January was $682,802. That number was up 5.2% compared to 2018. And with 66 condo sales in the month, the numbers were down 46% from last year. There were 191 active listings on the market in January, up 48% from 2018. The ratio of sales to listings was a lower 38.7% for the month. That number puts CO8 into a moderate seller market territory. The average days on market came in at 19, one day slower than last month. Here's a snapshot summary of the significant real estate milestones for Toronto in January 2019. It looks like fewer people want to sell, and there are fewer buyers in many of the outlying districts. We saw the third lowest number of January sales since 2009, at 4,009. And the ratio of sales to listings was 33.5% in January. This is just barely into seller market territory. Also, the average sale price came in at $748,328, which was up just 1.7% compared to January 2018. Those mortgage stress test financing rules from one year ago have seriously affected our market. 
Note that this overall market average was 2.6% lower than two years ago in January 2017. Overall sales in the month were flat from one year ago, and the GTA real estate market overall averaged the days on market at 33, one day slower than last year. Also, detached home sales in January 2019 with a purchase price over $2 million at 65 were down 19% from last year at 80. Affordability considerations are now shifting the market more to a condominium lifestyle. Condo sales took a 38.4% share of the total market. Downtown condo active listing numbers were lower in CO1 by 3%, and up in CO8 by 48% from last year at this time. In January, sales were down 28% in CO1 and higher by 5.7% in CO8 compared to 2018. The condo days on market average was 25 to 19 days, significantly faster than the overall market. And the ratio of sales to listings for condos downtown were higher in CO1 at 48%, than in CO8 at 38.7% due to the increased listing inventory in CO8, but still higher than in the overall market. Building on this higher demand due to better affordability, condo appreciation in the two main downtown markets averaged 5 to 7.6% year over year, slower than at any time in 2018. Markets in York Region and other 905 neighbourhoods have suffered the most from the market slowdown. All of York Region are continuing to show that they are in serious buyer market territory. Expect sales and inventory to pick up as we progress into the spring market, where listings and buyers are most active. Buyers should watch for more pricing opportunities to get the condo or house of their dreams. This month we're looking at the stats for the Toronto Real Estate Board sales by sales and average price by major home type. As you can see from the chart, detached homes in the 416 took a big hit to sales and in their average selling price. In Toronto, detached sales were down 8.6% year over year, but up by 7% in the 905 districts. Average prices were lower by 8.8% in Toronto and flat year-over-year year in the 905. Condo apartment sales performed in a similar fashion, lower by 6.3% in Toronto and up by 6.7% in the 905 areas. However, despite sales numbers being down, the average sale price was up 8.8% in Toronto and higher by 8.2% in the 905. The downtown Toronto house market, including east to the beaches and west through to Dufferin, have remained very solid, with lower inventories but brisk sales, with high sales to listings ratios between 50 to 60 percent. Sales price changes have been very moderate, however, in tune with the overall market. The most dramatic changes we're seeing are occurring in the 905 districts around Toronto, with average price changes ranging from minus 4% to a high of 6% in York Region, and more moderate average prices in Durham. We have those East End Toronto and 905 statistics available as infographics if you'd like to see them. Just email or message. So what's a terrific way to make your first baby step into Toronto's real estate market and find out where those more affordable choices are? The best first step is to go on a market experience tour of condo or house neighbourhoods with one of our team members. Leave your checkbook at home. What a tour is not intended to do is show you homes with the intention that you'd immediately buy one. What it is intended to do is give you an opportunity to get a clearer idea of what's available on the market in your favourite parts of the city and in your price range without worrying about being pressured into having to make an immediate buying decision. Once you've had your tour, we want you to go back home and think about what you saw. You'll then be better able to set up a good home buying plan and make smart, educated decisions about where and when you want to be in your new home. You can sign up for your condo tour at marketexperiencetour.com and a tour of houses at dailytorontohometours.com. 
Remember to check back here in early March for our February 2019 Toronto Real Estate Market Report.